You are the best you the world will see. Come along now and share you with me. Let's learn something new and share feelings too. Cause these are the things to do to be the best you. Hi, Auntie Lena. Oh, well, hello, Possum, and hello, friends. Uh, what you doing, Auntie Lena? Oh, I'm learning how to crochet. That's awesome. Uh, what are you making? Well, I'm trying to make a neck scarf, Possum, but I sure am making a lot of boo-boos. It's frustrating, but I'm not stopping until I can do it right. Well, uh, I'm making boo-boos too, Auntie Lena. I got a bad grade on my math test today. Oh, oh subtraction is just so hard. Oh, I understand, Possum. Learning new things can be hard, but there's one thing I know. If we want to win at something that's hard, we need to keep working at it, and we'll get it. Uh, how can I win at math? Practice and patience. Let's think about this. Why might math be important to you? Or what about math is fun? Well, I don't know, Auntie Lena. I have to take math. I'm in school. OK, well, let me ask you this instead. Do you enjoy playing the concertina? I love playing the concertina. I've been practicing and, and getting better. And it took courage, just like we talked about. But now I have three songs memorized. Oh, that's wonderful, Possum. Then you must know that to play music, you have to count beats. And counting is math. And cooking is something you like to do too, right? Well, <laughs> you know how much I love cooking with Mama Possum? Yes, I do. When you cook, you have to measure ingredients like one cup of flour or three tablespoons of milk. Measuring is also math. Well, I never think about math when I cook or play music. I'm just having fun. Surprise! Knowing how to do math can help you have fun. But Auntie Lena, making boo-boos isn't fun. Well, I hear you, Possum, but those boo-boos can help us learn. Making mistakes and working through hard times, it isn't easy, but it's worth it. There's even a story that shows us why. It's called The Girl with a Mind for Math by Julia Finley Mosca. Whoa, who has a mind for math? <laughs> Let's find out with our friends at Woodland Park Zoo. Hi, Hi friends. friends, I'm Miss Susan. And I'm Kate. And we're at the Woodland Park Zoo. Today I'm reading this book called The Girl with a Mind for Math, the story of Ray Montague, written by Julia Finley Mosca and illustrated by Daniel Riley. You ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. If there's something you want but it seems out of reach, here's a story for you, a great truth it will teach. When you focus your mind, you'll succeed through and through, like one bold engineer by the name Montague. In a state we call Arkansas's one winter day, a baby was welcomed, a girl they called Ray. She was bright as a star, super smart from the start. She was headstrong, this child, and not faint of heart. Yes, this girl had potential, her granddad was proud. He told her, work hard, you'll stand out from the crowd. Then something she cherished when Ray was just seven, he took her to see her first ship. It was heaven. A real submarine, her eyes open wide. Who made it, she asked as they followed the guide. Engineers, said the man, giving Ray's head a pat. But my dear, you don't need to know all about that. At the time, the man's insult went over her head. No, you can't, were the words he had meant, but not said. Kind of mean, right? I know, I don't like that part. Engineering, thought Ray, and her life's dream began, except most people laughed when she told them her plan. Stay strong, said her mom. Use your brains, you'll be fine. There will always be people who pay you no mind. Just because you're a girl and because you are black, don't let them or the state of your school hold you back. You see, schools in those days were what's called segregated. The black and white students were kept separated. 
That's wrong, you exclaim. It was dismal, no fooling. And worst of all, white kids received better schooling. Is that fair? No. Yeah, I know, this used to happen. But Ray studied hard, she had grit, taught herself. She was gifted in math and read books by the shelf. When the time came for college, she knew what to choose. She'd learned to build boats, but she got some bad news. Engineering's not taught to black students, they said. Her heart hit the floor, I'll take business instead. She'd learn what she could and she'd learn the rest later. Their rules were unjust, but that school wouldn't break her. Ray finished with honors. Oh boy, what a smarty. She said her farewells. There was no time to party. I'm off to a place filled with history's greats, the capital city of all 50 states. Do you know what that city is? No. It's called Washington, D.C. It's the capital of the United States. Oh. Yeah, that's where the president lives. Makes sense. Yeah. Now, finding a job, it turned out that took time. She looked and she looked. Ray was not one to whine. Then it must have been fate. At least that's what it seems. She was hired to type. Were they built? Can you say it? Submarines. Yeah, can you believe that? That's a good coincidence, right? Because she really yeah. loves submarines. And then she got a job working in the same office they do that. I can't believe that happened. I know, the story's getting good. The Navy, that's right. Oh, but hold all your cheers. Ship designing was only for trained engineers. Look, they're all white guys. So she watched as they work and she learned every task, even studied computers by night in a class. <gasps> then her big break arrived. The whole staff got the flu. Ray did all of her work and the engineers too. Her boss was in shock. Ho, 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 how he exploded. From memory, said Ray, and with that, got promoted. Life should have been swell, yet that wasn't the case. Her boss treated her poorly because of her race. Many people like him tried to make her feel small. Ray just held her head high and she outworked them all. You see, it doesn't matter. You work hard, things can happen. What next? From the White House, there came a command. The president ordered a ship, make it grand. And quickly he added, well, that didn't fly. All those plans would take engineers months to supply. Here's the thing about that. When designing a boat, there are thousands of measurements one needs to note. All those numbers take math and that takes some time. Ah but Ray had been working on something sublime. What do you think it is? Um, a machine to do it for her? Yeah, she knows how to do it with a computer. She took a deep breath. I can solve this, she said. I'll come up with a system to do it instead. I'll draw the plans faster, she told them. Don't fret, I'll design the first ship by computer, no sweat. How long do you think that might take? What's your guess? Would it take her a month, maybe weeks for success? Well, it took calculations and tons of caffeine. But Ray finished in hours, just over 18. This is the first time they used computers. Before then, they did all the math by hand. Her program, that worked, all the blueprints were done. The ship was constructed, the engineer stunned. You did it, they cheered, and her boss had to say that her quick mind for math had in fact saved the day. Look, they all have thumbs up, but he doesn't look very happy, does he? I don't think the two men look very happy. Why do you they think they're mad? I think they're mad that she could accomplish more than they could. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She continues though. The end, no, not quite, when Ray's ship was unveiled. Only white men could go and Ray's invite not mailed. Say what? You heard right. No invite? Abhorrible. In fact, some might say it was downright deplorable. Yet Ray kept her cool, gave her best every day. And in time, all her skills were applauded. Hooray. People learned of her work. Who's this way? They demanded. When they met her, they stared. The expected demand. Right? Because back then, women couldn't have the same opportunities that men had. And even now, today, it's still hard for women. Yes, that happened a lot. Many could not believe that a woman of color did all she'd achieve. Some even thought Ray was a maid, sad but true. When they'd order a drink, she'd say, bring me one too. All her humor and wit served her well through the years as she battled the hard times with laughs and not tears. And that boss in the Navy who'd been so unkind made Ray the first woman to lead ship design. More honors would follow, her fame picked up steam, and finally, at last, she accomplished her dream. That title she worked for, an engineer score. Now the world knows her feats, she is hidden no more. So the lesson to all is don't ever give in. Take a chance, rock the boat. If it sinks, you can swim. Yeah. When a storm comes your way, hold your course and don't stress. Never quit, and like Ray, propel straight to success. You got it. And then there's a letter from Ray. 
Dear reader, if you have a dream like I did, study hard and stay focused. Always remember that just because someone says you can't, that doesn't have to stop you. You might have to go in a different direction and it might take you a little longer, but you can achieve your dreams. Ray Montague, look at all these degrees. She's like swimming in degrees. Hey Kate, did you like the story? Yes. Yeah, what did you like about it? Um, I like that it's a real story and that she accomplished her dreams even that even when people said that she could never. Right, yeah, I like that too. All right, should we say bye to our friends? Bye-bye, bye. thanks for joining us. Auntie Lena, I thought it was so wrong that people thought a black girl couldn't build submarines. I think it's awesome that she did. That's right. She wanted to be an engineer to build things, and the thing that she wanted to build most was a submarine. But, well, she knew why she wanted to be good at math, and I don't. You know, Possum, this reminds me of when you had to paint a mural and you weren't sure what you wanted to paint. Oh yeah, well you helped me to shake things up and we learned about capoeira with Maestre Silvio. Right, so let's shake things up in another way. Let's get curious and ask some questions about subtraction. You have any? Hmm, yes I do. Well, Auntie Lena, how does subtraction help you? Well, it can help me share with others. Subtraction is when you take one number away from another, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say I have four cookies mm -hmm. and you ask me for two. Mm -hmm. Four minus two equals two. And then we'd both have two cookies. That's right. Subtraction can make things equal. Oh yeah. And what else does subtraction help you do? Hmm, well, when I use my box of 12 crayons, I like to scatter them all over the table. When I return the crayons to the box and I only have 10, I know that two are missing. So subtraction helps to share with others and find out something's missing. Yes, and it also helps me know how much money I have to spend. If I have $5 to buy a present for my friend's birthday, but I get hungry and buy a snack for $2, how much would I have left to spend on a gift? Oh, uh, I know, I know, uh, five minus two equals three. So you'd only have $3. Very good, Possum. $3 isn't much money for a gift, though. <laughs> That's true. But by using subtraction, now I know that I might need to be creative and make a gift instead of spending money on one. Hmm. What would you make, Auntie Lena? Hmm. I'm not sure. But Mr. Jamel is great with coming up with creative ideas. Let's visit him at Napantla Cultural Arts Gallery and see what he's making. Oh, hi friends! It's Mr. Jamel. I am here at Napantla Cultural Arts Center, and I am from Xenomath. Today, we are gonna talk about patterning and sequencing, and patterns are things that oftentimes happen over and over and over again. And sequencing is putting things in numbers, like what's first, What's second? What's third? Or what's fourth? <laughs> are you ready? Let's get to it. We are going to make bookmarks. I love reading all kinds of books and I love bookmarks. So listen, first, we're gonna figure out how we're going to make the bookmarks in order. Are you ready? Okay, first, can you say first, my friends? First, we're going to cut this piece of paper into threes. Shall we? <laughs> One. <laughs> Two. And then three. Now my friends, first we cut. Second, we are going to take our hole puncher and a hole <laughs> in our bookmark. Okay, third, we are going to cut a piece of our string. <laughs> then we are going to put it through our hole just like this. And we're going to tie it 
<laughs> now we have a bookmark to decorate. My friends, let's count. First, we cut it. Then, we put a hole in it. That was second. And third, we cut the string. And fourth, we put the string through the hole. Four, four. All right, my friends, now, we're going to decorate our bookmark. I think I want to first put on my bookmark, an owl. <laughs> an owl is going to go on my bookmark first. <laughs> Whoa, my friends, one owl. Second, I'm going to put a flower. <laughs> Third, I want to use a treasure chest. And fourth, I want to use a music note because Mr. Jamel loves to sing. Alrighty. Oh. Now we have an amazing sequence. We have first our owl, second our flower, third our treasure chest, and fourth we have our music note. Now, my friends, I'm going to turn it around because I'm going to make a pattern on the back using my stamps. <laughs> okay, so first, I want an orange circle. As you can see, we have our orange circle. Next, I want a blue square. Ah. A blue square. So first we have an orange circle. Second, we have a blue square. Next, I want another orange circle. Oh, another orange circle. And then lastly, we want another blue square. Okay, my friends. First, we have an orange circle, blue square, orange circle, blue square. And if we were to make another one, what would it be? You think it would be another orange circle? Or you think it would be another blue square? <laughs> you all are so smart, it would be another orange circle. <gasps> Patterns, they tend to repeat themselves over and over again. <gasps> oh my goodness, my friends, this is so fun. And whatever pattern you wanna make at home, feel free. Alrighty, my friends, thank you so much for joining me today on Look, Listen, and Learn. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye, friends. It's time for Movement Minute. Hi friends, welcome to Movement Minute. I'm Mr. Tyler, and today I'm gonna teach you how to be able to catch a football. All right, you guys ready? So you wanna be able to keep your eye on the ball and position your hands in a way that's gonna be able to give you the best chance to be able to catch the ball. Now always keep your focus. Don't get distracted because you never know when the ball's gonna come. And when that ball comes, you wanna be able to see it, catch it, and tuck it in. Everybody get ready. We're gonna practice it on the count of three. One, two, three, eye on the ball, position your hands, catch it, and then you wanna be able to tuck it in. Now don't be discouraged if you drop the ball. Sometimes dropping the ball makes the best catchers. And if you're good at catching the ball, stay good at catching the ball. All right, thank you guys for watching. So Possum, now how are you feeling about math? Oh, I feel better. When we started talking, I didn't wanna tell you that I got a bad grade on my math test. Mm. I understand it's natural to want to get away from things that don't make us feel good, but challenges and mistakes can help us see where we're stuck and where we can try to improve. 
Well, can you help me with my subtraction homework so, so that I can win at math? Yes, Possum, I sure can. I want you to feel proud about your math skills. But before we hit the homework, let's shake things up and make some music with our friends. Oh, awesome. Uh, what should we play? Let's go back to Woodland Park Zoo and find out what kind of music Miss Leanna can teach us today. Hi, Hi friends. friends. My name is Miss Leanna. And I'm Carmela. And we are here today at the Woodland Park Zoo. And do you know what we are talking about today? Um, math. We're talking about math, that is right. We're talking about math, but we're also going to do it with these instruments right here. I think you know what this instrument is called. Can you tell me what it is? It's called a ukulele. It is called a ukulele. So we're going to use the ukulele today to talk about math, because believe it or not, Music is all about math. So, let's start with the easy one. How many strings do we have? Four. Four strings. If I'm gonna take my thumb, I'm gonna put down on one string at a time, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. Can you do that for me? Nice, that sounds really good. I love that you stayed in the same time or tempo that I gave you when I said the numbers. I went one, two, three, four. So when we play one note per beat for each number, that's called a quarter note. You can think of it like four quarters in a dollar. So we have four quarter notes. One, two, three, four. But we can do other numbers too. We could do half notes, which are two numbers per note. So instead of going one, two, three, four, I'm gonna have you try something a little different. We're gonna strum all of them, and we're gonna do that for two beats each, which sounds like this. One, two, three. Four. Can you try that with me? Here we go. I'm gonna to count to four first and we're gonna do it together. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Nice. We're gonna to try to put them together. You think you can do that? Cool. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Got it? Let's do it together. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Very nice. So we've done quarter notes. We've done half notes. The last one that I want to add in there is whole notes. So we've put together our quarters. We've put together a half, which means that we finally have a whole. The whole note takes all four beats and it lasts for the same amount of time. And because I know you're a little bit of a pro at the ukulele, we're gonna add one more level of difficulty. So when we do the whole note, I want you to put down this finger. Yeah, so that we make this chord. Yeah, nice job. That's like C, right? That is C, you are so right. So we are doing the C chord and we're going to hold it for four whole beats. It's really easy to hold a whole note because you just have to hit the one and let everything else ring. Make sense? We're gonna do it together. I know you're gonna do great. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Yes, that is really good. So let's put it all together. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Yeah, nice job, that was so good. I would like you to come up with four quarter notes and they can be any notes. So you don't have to just go down. You could go in a different order or you could use your fingers if you want. So can you come up with four quarter notes for me? Ooh. Nice, let's do that. Here we go. One, two, three, four. 
Pretty, that sounds really good. So we've put together a lot of notes with all of these numbers. So why do you think math is important to music? Um, because you have to memorize numbers to keep the beats. Absolutely. You have to be able to keep the time in your head and remember how long each of these notes go for how many beats. And so that is a lot of math to keep track of. So if you are learning music, you definitely want to be learning your math too. Did you have fun playing with me today? Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad. Well, we're going to say bye to our friends and then let's keep playing for a little bit afterwards. Okay? Bye, friends. Bye. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Possum, look. Oh, is that the next scarf you were making? It most certainly is, my friend. I kept practicing. Wow, I love it. Oh, and if you make one more scarf, then you'll have two scarves. <laughs> Correct. And if I give you one scarf, then how many will I have? Oh, uh, two minus one is one. That's right. And here's one for you. <laughs> See, possum? Look at <sighs> that. <laughs> your subtraction is already adding more fun to your life. Oh, thank you so much, Auntie Lena. I love it. Oh, and thank you for helping me win at math. You're welcome, Possum. And friends, thank you for taking time to look, listen, and learn with us today. Remember, you are the best you that the world will ever see. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Please stay tuned after the credits for Auntie Lena's parent tip. Brought to you by Public Health. Protect yourself and your family from serious illness by staying up to date on your COVID boosters. Resources and information at kingcounty.gov slash vaccine. It won't be easy, but it will be worth it. Mrs. Ray Montague's journey was not easy, but her perseverance was worth it. The ability to stick with a task or a goal until it's completed is called self-efficacy. It's the ability to persevere and believe in oneself, or as my dad would say, have some stick to itness. As caring adults, we can foster these traits in our early learners by challenging their negative thoughts and behaviors. When they're feeling stuck, help them to identify their strengths and find fun ways to problem solve. Then when things do go right, offer specific praises for their accomplishments and efforts. There are countless examples of people who've overcome challenges without privileges and have soared to new heights. Bruce Lee, Wilma Mankiller, Harriet Tubman, and of course, Mrs. Ray Montague. What stories do you have about your own family? By sharing these stories, you remind your little learners that they aren't alone. Whether your child struggles with math or tying their shoes, sometimes simply knowing that someone believes in them is all the motivation it takes to become the best that they can be.